Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, this is a regular meeting of the Arts and Culture Commission. Today is December 20th, 2018. Um, Secretary, please uh, take roll. Commissioner Garcia? Here. Here. Commissioner Um, Here. Uh, this meeting is officially called to order. Um, could you please rise for uh, the Pledge of Allegiance? Consent calendar. Um, this is the time for the Commission to consider matters under consent calendar. Items um, one and two. Um, Motion to approve. Second. Approve. Aye. Do I have a motion to consider items one and two? Motion. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. And aye. those opposed, aye. say no. Aye. 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 Matter approved by um, five votes. Uh, work study session. Um, we have one work study session. Uh, please note that there are, will be no motion or action taken on this item. The item is a discussion on percent for the arts program. Thank you, Council Member Sierra. Um, and it's nice to see a full board, a uh, full commission uh, for, uh, for now. It's a little bittersweet that some of you may not be here for the next time. Um, but uh, what a way to end this, because we will be discussing the percent for art. Hopefully, if this goes through, um, we would then uh, have some funding that comes uh, organically from uh, city you know, activities uh, into our office. So if you can please refer to the uh, PowerPoint printout that is on you, in front of you that starts with Arts and Culture Commission meeting December 20th, 2018. And we will have these copies available at the city for any of the public who'd like to, re to review it. Um, please skip towards um, page four uh, to, I want to, it last, the last meeting that we met, Commissioner Cha had asked for a report on what has been done regarding percentage for the arts. And for those of you who may not be familiar with percentage for the arts, it is um, collecting a percentage of, of the budget for a new development um, to go into uh, the for, to support the arts, and specifically public arts uh, for the city. Um, and so planning and building agency, um, which we call PBA internally, have been managing this public arts in Santa Ana before the installation of the Arts Commission. So for decades, it was um, in, the, in the charge of the, of the Planning and Building Agency. But, uh, and so they have proposed in the past. In 2003, they proposed an amendment to the City of Santa Ana's Municipal Code. They called it Santa Ana Art in Public Places Program. And it was modeled after the City of Brea. Um, and it was for developments of commercial, industrial, or residential product, projects that were uh, $2 million or above. Um, so if that project you know, cost that much, then 1% of that total building construction 
would then go back to the city for public arts. Um, and, and they had, they wanted to put together an art and public places advisory committee that would review and approve those, uh, you know, the proposals and the artists. And I believe actually Commissioner McGee was around during that time. Do you recall? I'm not sure. Um, that during this, in 2003, when they had had this proposal to, to the planning commissioners. I recall the discussions, yeah. yes. So, I mean, they did a lot of work, and I have all of that paperwork where they drafted the entire um, amend amendment, very detailed as to, you know, how to select artists, what kind of art, what, what it would, all of that would entail. Um, unfortunately, it, would, it did not, and they had met two or three times, I'm not sure, but in different planning commission meetings to discuss this during their work sessions. Um, but unfortunately, it did not pass through city council, and probably because at that time, um, well, the reasons that I was given from planning and building um, agency was that during that time, it was um, just economically not viable for the developers to have this added on, uh, added on fee to their plan because among all the other myriads of fees that they have to incur from the city and from the county itself. And so because Santa Ana was trying to recruit more developers during that time, that that was not necessarily the most economically viable way to go. So um, it did not pass. Um, but, and then, so, so the next page, page six of this presentation, um, in 2006, PBA then decided to have a City of Santa Ana citywide design guideline. Um, and that resolution was adopted by City Council on April 17, 2006. Um, and it applied to new developments over 100 units. So that's, uh, that, would, that was a way to uh, standardize or streamline how the city would look aesthetically. Um, and to this day, uh, PBA continues to be the stewards to recommend public art to be included in new development projects with 150 more units um, and that uh, and the public art that they require to have in these new developments uh, would be valued at no less than $125,000 and planning commission is the ones that are the ones that review and approves at this currently that's what they do um, and uh, but it, about a, in October, a few months ago, I was asked if um, Arts and Culture Office could give input into the overall urban design policies which they are updating. They're calling it the City of Santa Ana General Plan Update. And so that's when they want, want to talk about everything from the way streets look to buildings to public art, all of that. You know, um, they want to plan a more cohesive looking city. So I think that's very exciting and interesting that they uh, that now that there is a position in economic development for arts and culture to have our input in that. So I think we could we could all give input for for that. But that's what's happening currently. I would love to be able to um, have a percent for art program for ourselves, however, separately from that that guideline. That is just a guideline. Um, and then I gave three examples of cities that have successful percent for art policies. The first one is, I chose was Los Angeles. It is a huge city, but I did it on purpose. Um, I wanted to just show different scales of how it works. So for a huge city like Los Angeles that has over three million population, I'm close to four at this point because this was a 2010 census. So at this time, it'd probably be about four million people living in LA. The city itself, not the county, just the city. Um, and the, the agency that manages their percent for art is Department of Culture Affairs. Um, they, they break it into two different uh, ways of looking at, or, or of uh, assessing fees. The first way is, and their threshold is a lot lower. It's at 500,000. So building, con, or um, development that, I'm sorry, construction or, yeah, new development, that is valued at $500,000 or more, private development projects, they base it on either square footage of the building or 1% of the project's building and safety permit valuation, whichever is lower. lower. Or the second way um, of assessing fees is 1% of the total cost of all construction improvements or renovation projects undertaken by the city. So they split it up separately, city 
public versus private development. Um, their total budget for arts is about $5.7 million. So they're able to, not all of, not all 5.7 million is revenue generated from the 1% um, project uh, program, but it's, it's how much they have to spend. Um, the second city I chose is Long Beach since it's closest to us and it reflects our um, population a little more similarly. Their population is uh, 453,000 um, and they, their percent for art policy is run by the redevelopment agency. And 1% of the total cost of a capital project goes back to their public arts. And the total budget for their arts, but it does include the Long Beach Museum of Arts, is $6.2 million. And finally, the third city that I chose is Sacramento, with a, pro with a population of 466,000. Um, and it's run by, the percent for art policy is run by Sacramento Metropolitan Arts Commission. Um, and they put out actually city and county ordinances for this. So they are an ordinance uh, driven policy, policy, or not policy, ordinance driven fee collecting. 2% um, of capital, so they go by 2% of capital improvement project budgets goes towards public art. And Art in Public Places Committee selects and, uh, and reviews and approves their proposals. So that's the research that I've done for this. Um, percent for art program and I'd like to open it up to the commissioners if you've had any discussion items or, or anything you want to discuss or ask questions or talk about um, so that we can move this forward in our city now it's time for um, comments um, oh, oh yeah we'd like to have a discussion first and then, yeah yeah okay. I have a question. Yes. So for this 1% for the arts, is this only for public art or are you approaching it as like a broader art? I'd like to have it as a broader, mm -hmm. with public art as a component, mm -hmm. definitely. Okay. Yeah. Are there any cities in Orange County that are doing this? Um, I don't, I was trying to look and most of them have more, I was looking at Huntington Beach and Laguna Beach mm -hmm. and they tend to have more of a policy so they, it's not, uh, or like a guidelines that is internally enforced. So it's not mandatory. So th that, those were some of the things where we were considering between just having a, a, a guidelines, a policy, or an ordinance. An ordinance would be l legally binding and it would be a, you know, a law that is enacted that you, ha you must pay this fee. Otherwise, you know, you're violating the law. Um, that would take a longer time. It would have to be approved by council. It would have many more steps. Um, whereas with either guide, guidelines would be the most, uh, the simplest internally to conduct. You know, you just come up with some guidelines and then we work with, uh, partner with, um, let's say like planning and building to enforce it and, and kind of ask that the developers, you know, and which is actually what they're doing now, which is they're just asking developers, you need to do this. Yeah. So then it's more for the guidelines instead of an ordinance. That's not what you're going to be pursuing. I, I'm, to I'm thinking involved? about that. Yeah. Yeah. What's our population here in Santa Ana? It's over 300,000. 340,000? Yeah, 340,000. 350? Yeah. 350. Okay. We have um, public comments. Um, so please, um, Victor Payan, would you please come up? Thank you. 
Yes, hello. I want to wish you all happy holidays and uh, welcome the new commissioner. Uh, there's a lot of great work that you guys have done uh, over the past several years. And um, I wanted to speak uh, to Maritza was saying, I think it's important to have this available, not just for public art, for programming and, and general operations, because uh, there's already been a tremendous investment made by the city and the commission, and it really needs uh, extra fuel to get going as we connect the arts commission and, and, and you know, the city's um, and the residents' desires with the with the arts master plan and the new updated general plan. There's no guarantee that funding is going to be here, especially as the city uh, is seeing a shortfall of, of revenue. Um, so having as much to protect the Arts Commission and the work that you're doing is very critical. And uh, the city has already invested a lot in the downtown and we've seen some of the benefits of that. The rest of the city uh, you know, needs to benefit and this is something that will help uh, provide resources to do that. There's tremendous uh, organizations and performing groups and, 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 and school programs throughout the city that having something like this will put it in the mind of the city council to say, okay, how do we spend this to benefit the entire uh, community? And uh, it is very important. I know that this is something that has been discussed for several years. So, um, like I said, you know, looking at the alignment with the city's uh, arts master plan um, and the benefit of, of all six wards or whatever the districts are going to be now. I think there's still six of them. But uh, to have this move forward now, we'll put it, you know, in a, in a proper place to be considered before any cuts start happening. And, and as we know, the arts are generally the first to be cut. And um, there's so much benefit that they do for families and, and students. And, uh, and what we think is really, really important is economic development. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I want to welcome uh, the new commissioner, Evelina. Welcome. Ward 6 has a wealth of wonderful cultural uh, assets and wonderful opportunities to develop. So it should be a very exciting time. And I want to also say hello to all my former colleagues. It's wonderful to be back on this side and to see all of you working together with staff on such amazing and long needed projects. And now they're finally moving forward. So thank you all for being our rocket fuel and making these things happen. Uh, just about the um, arts, um, the percent for the arts is a wonderful way to bring in revenue so that we're not a draw on the general budget, you know, of the city because we are, you know, there are many other priorities. Uh, but also remember that we do have the film permitting fees that are, that are another little thing that got left out in, a, in, in another department. It's over in Parks and Rec, but that is also another very viable revenue fee, you know, and helps us develop filming and the creative uh, film and TV industries and all of the revenue that they could bring, so do keep that in mind. Uh, public art is very important to creating a world-class city. If you go to any city, like nobody visits Paris for the banks, right? Nobody goes to Seattle. Uh, well, maybe they go to Seattle for the Starbucks, maybe there. But, you know, most cities, you don't go there, you know, to go visit a gas station, right? You go because they have beautiful works of art. They have museums. They have unique destinations that provide, you know, just life-changing experiences. And Santa Ana is really poised with its collection of historic buildings and it's 250 years of history in the Santa Ana Valley. So there's a lot to draw, to draw off of, a lot of history to draw off. I believe um, Mr. McGee knows about and is probably very familiar with the language that was previously in planning and building and you are too probably, Tram. It used to be specific about public art needing to relate to the population where it's located or the historical context of the of the location where it's going to be placed and I think that's very important in moving forward that we don't have it be a random thing like Brea where they just pick out of a catalog and it's all random um, but it does have some kind of historical integrity and uh, you know relationship to the population that will be cohabiting with that public art. It's a gr public art's a great opportunity to really activate and engage our populations. So I think that the more the more we could do that, the better. Thank you. Any other comments or discuss? Yes. Yes, I just had a couple more questions. Um, on page eight, when you say that where it states that the current state of the public art 
Um, it says requesting input from Arts and Culture Office for the Senate and a general plan. What does that mean? Um, so it, does this mean that any input that you provide uh, for public art, um, for this 1%, could be integrated into the general plan, or is this more for the urban design policy? I think this is more okay. for urban design specifically. Mm -hmm. This is not, has nothing to do with the 1%. Okay. Yeah, th okay. what they're asking, this update. Mm -hmm. So how is that input going to be um, obtained? Is from the Arts and Culture Office. So are you doing um, research? Is the commission going to be involved in that? Is that going to be an open process as far as the overall urban design policies? Yes, I was actually hoping to get to be able to. That's why I brought it up today, so mm -hmm. that hopefully if anybody is interested in being part of that, giving input, um, I did tell uh, PBA that we would be having this meeting. And so I'd wait to see you know, first. Um, they gave me the draft, so whoever's interested, I think we can talk afterwards. Okay. Any more comments? I have one more comment. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so what is the next step then for the commission? Um, yes, I was thinking about that myself. If, um, I mean, I would probably, what, what I would do is first draft, um, revisit what has already, so much work has been put into it, update it, make it more relevant to today mm -hmm. um, and for our city now, where the current status of our developers plus the arts, um, and then submit it to you for review. Um, and then from there, and then hopefully this can be pushed um, to, I'm not sure does, with a policy, does council, Mark, does council have to approve it? Depend on if it's a ordinance or just a miscellaneous fee that we could add. So I think we have to kind of vet that out. What it's, but if it's an ordinance, it would have to go to city council. And if it actually is a fee, it goes to city council as part of the budget okay. in June. So for the Sacramento, um, what's the budget for the arts? For that, I could not find a specific line item for the budget uh, for the arts. I think they broke it up into different ways. Uh -huh. And it was not specific enough for me to figure out. Okay. Um, does uh, staff have any comments that we, they wish to share with the commission? Yes, actually, I do have a oh, lot of. That, that, that oh. um, oh, the language isn't there. So this concludes the work study session. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so for updates, uh, for past events, uh, two great things. Tram, I think you have to go to public comments first. Oh. Number four, before staff member comments. Yes, public comments. Yes. Victor Payan, public comments. Should we acknowledge uh, Commissioner Cha's presence? presence? Commissioner Cha is present at the meeting. Thank you. Hello. <clears throat> All right. Um, I just want to say again, you know, as we as we cap off a really interesting year, a lot of great. Um, uh, successes, uh, a lot of movement in the Arts Commission. The city is uh, is moving ahead. Really excited that the the, the bathroom, uh, you know, p panels, the mural process for that was a success. I know there will be more. Um, and and again, just to deepen the, um, you know, the investment that has been made by so many communities and to stress the importance of equitable um, disbursement of opportunities and resources to the entire city. Um, and uh, there's two events that I wanted to uh, talk about that we're bringing, uh, that are some deadlines coming up. Um, the first is OC Dia del Nino, which is uh, going to be, it's a partnership between um, Media Arts Santa Ana Arts OC, it's their event, and it will be at the, at the OC Fair and Event Center. Last year we moved from, from the park over here to uh, OC Fair, and it was a huge success, so they want us to do it for two days. And we did a lot of outreach to Santa Ana organizations and artists to make sure that they were represented and we had good representation. But as we've got an expanded event, we want to you know, put out the call again so that you know, people doing youth workshops, 
uh, performers, um, and even community resource booths, that they have uh, presence there because it is a countywide audience and it's in conjunction with the Imaginology. So last year I think we had like 8,000 people. Um, so it's a you know, great opportunity to get, gain exposure to a countywide audience. And the deadline to apply for the online um, application is uh, Friday, January 11th. It's earlier than it was last year, so we really want to ask for your help in getting the word out to anybody you think would be a good for performing or um, presenting or being giving a youth workshop. Kite making, mask making, dance, uh, visual arts, uh, bead making, anything. Uh, we really want to run the gamut to do a great event again. And the theme is um, Celebration of the Americas. So last year we had uh, like Bolivian dancers, we had um, uh, you know, quite a, quite a, quite a good uh, uh, variety of, of uh, cultures represented. Um, and it doesn't have to be Latin American, we're celebrating you know, Day of the Nino International. And then the second one, and this is a, a project that is funded from the city's uh, arts grant, so I want to thank the city for um, providing arts grant, is the Philip K. Dick Film Festival. We're bringing it from New York to Santa Ana in March. We had a, a mixer on Philip K. Dick's 90th birthday, a uh, block away from where he lived in Santa Ana, and so people were really excited about that. And the dates are going to be um, March 15th through 17th, um, but we are having, in addition to that, a uh, Philip K. Dick Multicultural Dystopian Sci-Fi Short Film Challenge. So we've issued the, the challenge for filmmakers to make short films under five minutes having to do with the themes related to Philip K. Dick. Could be original, could be animation, experimental, documentary. We just want people to have fun, and the larger picture is to you know, get people thinking about how they can make films, even with their iPhones and cell phones, to look at their community, look at the history of Santa Ana, and celebrate the vision. Philip K. Dick, as you may know, uh, wrote the, the books that became inspiration for the films, uh, Blade Runner, Total Recall, Minority Report, Scanner Darkly, and there's a few more, and then uh, Man in High Castle, and, and there's a new series on Amazon, Philip K.'s Electric Dreams. But he was broke most of his life. He was visionary, but he was broke, and he lived in Santa Ana uh, in an apartment just kind of across from the Ebel. Um, but his vision was uh, transformative, and, and he's hailed as one of the most prolific and visionary science fiction artists. So we're happy that he lived here, and we want to inspire the next generation. So if you know anybody who's a filmmaker, a writer, a musician, an actor, let them know about our, our um, challenge, because then they can, you know, we can help connect them with other creative people to, um, you know, to really... Um, uh, grow our, our community and we want to you know reach people throughout the entire city for this. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have more public comment from um, Sandra Pena. Hello again. <laughs> I just wanted to say that um, you know I didn't get a chance to have a little exit uh, comment because you know we we ha we went for a little um, a little hiatus there um, between uh, meetings. So I just wanted to um, thank you all you know for for your cooperation, for your partnership, and for your leadership. Uh, I think we did some wonderful things together, and I wanted to remind everyone that it took over four years of collective advocacy of, of arts leaders all over Orange County, local artists, just to get the Art Commission. And we worked with staff to help educate our, our council members as to the importance, the economic importance, the educational importance of the arts, and uh, certainly the, its, its community-building um, community side as well. Um, Santa Ana um, is, of course, an amazing city, and we talked about it before, it's very historic, but it has three big challenges in really raising the bar citywide in the arts, and this is where this commission's really in a very key place to really raise the level citywide. Uh, one of the main challenges has been uh, connecting local talent to regional leaders in the arts field. So that's something that hopefully with future programs that you do, you know, working out mentoring programs like our muralists would certainly um, have, um, you know, I think a, a lot uh, to gain from actually learning the contemporary practices and the, you know, new guidelines that most modern muralists are, are using. Uh, professional development with organizations like NALAC and Creative Capital, which both have bilingual uh, create, you know, de professional development programs are something that would also help. And leadership training. Y'all are already working on the first leadership, youth leadership summit. Uh, that's kind of arts focused, so that's certainly going to help cultivate our future leadership. 
Um, cultivating tourism, too, is a really big one. Cultivating, cultivating tourism and business development. That will, of course, public arts is really going to help with that, with creating that quality of life that is going to draw uh, businesses that want to bring their workforces here. They want a quality of life. That's a very high one. Festivals, that's art festivals, film festivals, music festivals are also very important to creating that quality of life that brings in quality talent. And third, educational and employment opportunities. Uh, we have wonderful film, TV, and technology opportunities here for our local youth, especially with technology. I know that during my time I've been really hammering home the intersection between technology and art, and we are already in Orange County such a growing giant with our tech and our coding, our app development, and if we can bring those industries and connect them with our youth, with our 150,000 students that we have that are under 18, they are hungry for that diversity. That diversity that Santa Ana is really the only city in all of Orange County that has that intensity of diversity that we bring. So really, let's make those connections. I know you all will do it. If you need to reach out to me, I'm happy to uh, be a resource to you. Just, um, just, say the, just say the word, and I will be here. So thanks again, and everyone have wonderful holidays. And I also wanted to thank one more thing. I wanted to thank uh, Victor Payan here, my partner, as you know, because I dragged him out on his 50th birthday, and he was cool with it. And you know I've dragged him to many meetings, city meetings, and he's always been very cooperative. So you can count on him, too. Thank you so much. Good evening, commissioners. Um, it's really cool to see such a diverse group. I think it's the most diverse group I've seen in the city sitting up there. It's really cool. Um, I am here tonight because I wanted to share um, an upcoming event that actually Tram had gotten a hold of us. And it's a series that we've been doing for some time. It started in 2016, and I made copies for everyone. So um, I think there should be. And on the front of this, you're going to see that it says 2017, but we, we started to change it throughout as an update because um, this will be our fifth art roundtable. Um, the very first art roundtable was at Santa Ana High School, and that was a roundtable that came right after you guys created your Arts Commission um, master plan. So it was able to gather a lot of folks from the community to come up with an idea of how to make the arts a knitted community. And what, has, what happened is sort of was a snowball effect where right after the first meeting, folks said that they wanted three different things, which was a web site that, um, that had a registry, so they could have a registry for artists, um, that they could have a map, which the city actually has right now, of where arts is in the city, and the third thing was um, oh, an index, an art index. So, um, as of right now, we we are hoping for this roundtable coming up um, in January to do our launch of that registry to come full circle with what people asked for. And what I was saying was a snowball was the very first meeting at the school district spurned other groups like um, to see things that they wanted to see a little bit more of. The Bowers said they wanted a more of a networking event, so they hosted a networking event at the Kidsium, which was something that we brought everybody back together and got to know each other better. Then the next um, meetup was a artist wanted event where in order to get people into this registry, we actually had live, um, a live sign-ins. People learned how to write their art artist statements. Um, we had a table for the commissioners for them to meet the commissioners. We'd like to have that table again at the artist launch since there's a brand new set of commissioners as a group. They will, you guys can come out again and share and maybe even have a, a table there that gives some things about maybe the grants coming up or anything that you guys are, are doing in the commission. And um, then from there, the next thing was the Heritage Museum. And some of the folks that came to the Secrets Room actually asked for to highlight something that was really powerful about this community, which was the industrial arts sector. And what we learned during that time was how many guilds are here 
in tr including our breweries, our, um, we have a blacksmith's guild, we have surfboarding guild, we have multiple guilds in the city. We also have, um, we were able to um, give awards to some of our long standing groups like Chiarini Marble, who actually are right now hosting the live um, sculpting that used to be at Laguna, Laguna Arts. Um, and so it's just been amazing in terms of the connectivity and everything we do has a pipeline kind of effect along with it because we always bring the students in so that the students from fashion would be able to see folks in the field of fashion and students in lighting could see folks in the field of lighting and see where those jobs go and what they look like in real life. So anyway, this is the point where we get to actually really celebrate that we have probably the largest registry in all of Orange County. It's 130 or so folks that are signed up now and we want to get the word out so that all the institutions again will distribute that information and we can keep building the registry. From that registry, for our artists are getting jobs, which is one of the biggest parts of all of this, is that people have a place that they can actually go. And if they need somebody to do um, sculpting, or they need them to do music, or they need them to do anything, they're able to actually find them here in Santa Ana, from Santa Ana, and they can give them work. So that's the really important part of the arts registry in itself, that we can finally find people that we need instead of sourcing them from outside of the community. Um, that's basically what I just wanted to thank you for your support. You guys, the, the commission has supported now two out of five of these events. This is the third of them and we are planning on doing it at OCA. He said that um, he got to have a wonderful chance to meet you, Tram, and take you through the airport to show you the art there. Um, so we're continuing to work and we gave you kind of a, um, a write-up of what it would look like um, and we will be telling some stories there of folks who have actually been artists and the successes that they've had. That's something that we would like to share there. So I just thank you all for your assistance. I'm excited 2019 is here, so coming up. Thank you. And we have um, one final public comment from Ryan Smolar. Good evening, Santa Ana Arts Commissioners. My name is Ryan Smolar. I work with Downtown Inc., which is uh, part of the organiz well, one of the organizations that manages the Downtown Business Improvement District. We're excited to share with you a project we've been working on for a while and uh, looking forward to move forward on, which is a refresh of the banners in the Artist Village. Uh, if you've seen the banners, they, um, there's about, I think, 40 or so banners uh, around the area of, uh, between 1st and 3rd Broadway and Main. And they were put up, I think, over 10 years ago. And those banners have a lifespan of, and Mike, you can correct me because you were here, but a lifespan of about two to four years. It's been longer, yeah. So usually those type of banners have a lifespan of two to four years. And when the Wings of the City project was coming, one of the ideas we looked at for promoting that project was to replace the banners with Wings of the City banners. So we ended up getting all of the information on pricing, uh, how to go about doing the permitting to get the banners replaced, and then we didn't execute that program. And so with that information in hand, um, we were able to raise the funds, about $10,000, to replace the banners. And we want to kick off a process uh, early next year where um, we can have up to three d different designs uh, on the banners without incurring any additional costs. So we created a, a basic outline of how we think we can move forward on this program. We wanted to have a uh, neighborhood context event because we know the Artist Village means a lot of things to a lot of different people and it's had a, a very lot of history in a few small blocks, so it'd be great to get some of those stories out. We also want the artists, local artists who will apply to put their artwork on the, uh, the banners to have to be in the artist registry. And so we'll be kicking this off at the artist registry event so that artists can already see the connection between 
uh, signing up for their portfolio, getting paid to create work uh, in their city with their peers, and then hopefully more institutions will follow suit and use the platform for small calls for art as well. So we look forward to being in touch and working together to make our city more beautiful and our neighborhoods more distinct and to recognize artists and make them a big part of that process. Thanks. Thank Do we have any more public comments? No, no more public comments. No? Thank you. Does the staff have any comments they wish to share with the commission? Yes, actually. Yes, I do have a lot of updates to share with commissioners. Um, so the past two events that have passed, um, or have, we've been working on, um, one is the arts and culture presentation and reception in downtown, which we finally had, and it was a huge success, but I, we understand that December is such a um, uh, impacted week for schedules <laughs> because of all the parties, holiday parties, so unfortunately um, only uh, at the time Commissioner Pena was able to attend, um, but we did. We were able to still have uh, over a hundred people attend, even with all conflicting kinds of yeah events. Even uh, Commissioner Rubio had an event the same evening, which I wish I could have gone to. It was a very important event. So I know that there was a lot going on. Um, so we're we're very appreciative of those who did come out. Uh, four of the six artists groups were able to come and talk about the inspiration for their artwork. And to me, I think that was, I was, that was the most touching part and the most memorable part because um, they were talking about how proud they were to be Santa Ana artists and how much that art has transformed the city, and particularly that space. They, uh, people were recalling how 20 years ago that was such a, a yucky kind of piece of land, that parking lot, you know, and now look at it. You actually want to go visit a restroom. The, the artwork is around a restroom, and yet people make trips to see this restroom, you know. So imagine something like that on a small scale it can have that impact. So imagine something bigger, how much more impactful um, the art can be in this city. Uh, and, um, it's a, and there was, uh, we were very lucky to have uh, three different groups come and perform during the reception, uh, pro bono. Uh, one was the musician Greg Campfire, who gave a sample of his, of his creative process. Um, he's a musician, but he, he creates music from nature, from plants. Literally, he would hook a device on to listen to how the plants breathe and grow and, you know, and mixing that with beats and music. It was incredible. Yeah, I didn't know what to expect, but I, you know, at the end, I was completely convinced of his music and creative process. And, and then we had two ballet folklorical groups, one of which was introduced to us by Commissioner Garcia, um, Juan from Ballet Folklorico Fuego and La Sangre de California. I'm sorry about the pronunciation. And um, the other one is Ralampago de Cielo Grupo Folklorico. So they came out, beautiful dances. Everybody had a great time. Um, and also we were able to have um, Mayor Pro Tem Viegas and Council Member Sarmiento attend too. So I, we feel very honored um, that so much of the city staff um, and council members supported this, this event um, that we hope to have annually now, you know, to celebrate the artists that um, are part of our city. Uh, and then the Wings of the City um, exhibition, as I've, I've mentioned before, it will close it will, that exhibition will close um, end of January, January 28th of next year. So please tell your networks um, you know, to see it before it, it, it leaves to another city. Uh, they will deinstall on January 29th. So I've, I've more 9% more confirmed that with the moving company. You never know what may happen from now until then. Um, but they will come and pack it and ship it to the next destination and all of that will be paid for by Studio Marin. Who, where the artist is from, and, uh, and, and also the next city will pay for that shipping to that city. Um, and however, we will not have a closing event for this uh, because the Mexican consulate will not be in town. So it, you know, we're gonna announce through social media and other venues like that, but there's not gonna be one big you know, event to close it out. Um, upcoming events, we're going to have, everything's in place for the community listening sessions, and I believe on your desk is also the dates for the listening sessions, the dates and locations, yes. So I'm hoping if, especially, particularly in your ward, if you can come out to that, um, I'm also, will be inviting council members and other community leaders to come 
um, for the community to share how, you know, with the priorities that we've come up with with the master plan, how they can be involved in that implementation, any other kinds of events they have they'd like to share. And it's really for the community to get together, network, and just uh, connect with each other, you know, so that we feel like we're all moving towards these same goals and not everybody's doing the same thing, but just differently. You know, it, let's all collect our resources together. Um, and it, we have been able to uh, book a, an art workshops for youngsters who will be attending so that parents can feel like they can bring their kids after work instead of having, being torn between attending this meeting or, you know, childcare. Um, and then our second, well, not in any particular order, but our second uh, upcoming event is Artist Mentorship that we're partnering with Sarah Rafael Garcia. Um, on January 16th and 24th, we will be having workshops, uh, she will be giving workshops to help our artists write grant applications as well as grant reports as we're finding out some of these artists are very talented but they are inexperienced with either writing an application or filling out the report once they get the grant itself. You know, so this is a way also to help our artists um, so that they can apply for larger grants. Uh, and then a uh, third event coming up is Art, an art program for, uh, for the temporary homeless shelter called The Link. If you're familiar with that, that has been put up. Uh, I don't know the exact address, but um, I think it's near the observatory of the 200 bed shelter, temporary shelter. Uh, we'll, we will be partnering with Homeless Services here at the city. Um, that's Hafsa, uh, Keika, and Mercy House to, to provide art programming for, for the homeless individuals who will be at these shelters for their, with the families and, and everybody involved there. So it would be um, once a week pr uh, program for them. And uh, we're gonna be putting out an RFP to see, you know, for our artists to apply with the program. And it'll be an, an, a year long program. So it would be, you know, once a week for a year. Um, and the fourth, uh, event coming up would be is partnering with um, Sigurdsson Center for the Arts in the their in the community program. They have a program called In the Community. Uh, I'm working with uh, Jason Holland to provide three arts tune-up workshops and their professional development workshops, which I've spoken about before. So I'm working with him, and then the final. Event, uh, item come that that we're working on is the Willits and Sullivan placemaking art. I don't know if you remember this from maybe uh, two years ago. <laughs> it was brought before the Arts Commission to uh, beautify the corner of Willits and Sullivan. So there was funding from CDBG, I believe, to, to have some kind of art, art pro object there. It could be a sculpture, but not a mural. Nothing that can be um, tagged on like that and not a bench. So trying to not have people sleep there or loiter, you know, loiter around there, um, but to beautify the area. Uh, the funding for, the carryover funding was finally approved, so we will now start the RFP process for that as well. And so that's all my updates. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so now we are uh, uh, at uh, commission member comments. Do we have any commissioners? Um, that wish to give an update or comments or suggestions for any future agenda items? No comment. Um, I'll just make a couple comments. One of them, first of all, I think on, on these uh, banners, they're at least 17 or 18 years old. They could be old. They were originally designed out of Joe Duffy's office. And Joe probably has the original art and, and knows the information on top of that. Also, I just want to um, thank the staff for all their hard work and everything that they're doing. And uh, wish everybody Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thank you. Michelle? I'm just happy to be here, and, and I wish everybody a happy holiday. And I'm just pleased to be here. Well, well, well happy to have you. Thank you. Um, first of all, yes, I, I have come in. Um, I want to thank Sandra for all the hard work you did with the time you were a commissioner. Uh, also, I want to apologize since I took over of the 
um, the meeting, and I was lifting over some of the speakers, so I do apologize to you. We have more, but I just want to say that. Um, and also, um, I would like to wish you very happy holidays to all of you, and spend um, time with your families. Thank you. So I just want to thank the staff and the commissioners and the members of the public uh, serving on this commission for four years was a great learning experience. So just thank everyone that was a part of it. And I would just like to share some advice that I received uh, that I think is the best advice I've ever received is that the most important thing for an artist is exposure and not exposure like name recognition or like Facebook or Instagram but exposure to different ideas and different uh, sounds and tastes and sights. And as you move forward in this commission, I hope that you remember that all of our residents are creative, even if they don't identify themselves as artists, and that you emphasize that exploration of creativity and you provide access to arts education and free knowledge and whenever you can to give some love to our Santa Ana Public Library as well. And I wish you all the best going forward and a happy 2019. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, on that note, um, I, I, I want to thank uh, actually Tram specifically uh, for the community listening sessions. I know that we had talked about this um, and the idea had been kicked around, but I know that you put a lot of time, energy, and effort into this. And I'm really hopeful that um, by doing these community listening sessions that we will be able to engage uh, more of the residents and the community uh, in a meaningful way and also um, disseminate information. Uh, the, uh, the folks that spoke today um, all shared really great events um, and it would be wonderful if we have a larger audience and a master calendar um, that people can access at any time. So I really want to thank you for that. Um, and uh, I want to welcome Commissioner Oliver, uh, we're very happy to help have you. Um, I want to do a quick shout out to uh, Commissioner uh, Sandra Pena Sarmiento um, for all of you know your hard work and your leadership. Um, I definitely learned a lot from you, and I, I hope that you continue to stay involved and um, impart your wisdom um, on this body. Um, and um, let's see here. Um, um, I want to welcome everyone back uh, <laughs> now that we uh, um, uh, have finished our, the elections. Um, I wanted to just go over really quickly um, some of the priorities that I would like to see you know, moving forward, um, some of them which we've already started on. Um, so the listening sessions was one of them, um, and the youth arts leadership uh, program is definitely something that I would like to continue um, exploring. I know that we have uh, some informal, um, um, you know, uh, you know, uh, meetings or you know gatherings that uh, we're, we're putting together to kind of solidify the idea a little bit more. Um, if any of the commissioners are interested um, in, in learning a little bit more about it, you know, please come talk to me or um, come talk to Tram. Um, and I'm also very excited about the public art, the percent for the arts. Um, I really do hope that uh, as a commission we can move forward and really um, getting behind that um, and pushing that forward since um, it's apparently been languishing for almost 15 years, right? So I think that's, I think the city is, is, is ripe for that. Um, and also um, we are continuing to work on a mural ordinance slash policy. We had a subcommittee um, and I think there were some drafts that were going around that were being, um, that was uh, offered as suggestions. Um, and so we're still working on that. I know that we had wanted to report back um, in October, um, but I think we were not able to have some meetings and then we had some cancellations, unfortunately. So we're gonna be continuing that effort into the new year. Um, with that, uh, I'm sorry, this meeting went so long. Um, happy holidays, everybody. Commissioner Char, we yes. do have one last um, item one last before before you close sure. the meeting. Um, just one minute. It's Tram. Oh. Yes, um, since we will, uh, this will be the last time we'll be seeing three of our commissioners here today, I'd like to uh, publicly thank 
them for their service um, and for their vision and being, uh, they were, you know, they were the, what we call the OG, you know, commissioners from the beginning that um, Sandra had talked about, you know, fighting for, to have this commission if it weren't for many of them here. And so um, I'd like to present um, on behalf of the city a certificate of recognition to these three outgoing commissioners. Uh, I'm not sure of the protocol. Should they come up or? Uh, sure. <laughs> huh? Just hand, just hand it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, I'll start with Sandra Pena, uh, who was our former uh, commission chair. Um, thank you for your for your passion and for your vision, um, and for also help mentoring me in the very beginning when I first started a year ago, and and just really help and being the you know, the soul and the heart of the community. And I think what I really appreciate most about you, and this is just me personally, I'm not speaking on behalf of the city, but <laughs> me personally, I think, um, uh, you know, like, thanks to you, you know, we were able to uh, to have this fiery start, you know, to jumpstart a lot of the programs for the community because you really, really care so much about the community. So you will be missed, um, but of course I will definitely call on you for any future advice and uh, input. Um, but your certificate. Thank you. We should come out here to the certificate. Oh, oh, oh. You know, we can't do that probably until after, and probably, can we do it in front of the dais? I have no idea, but. Okay, we'll do it after. Sorry, sorry. But let me give this first. Thank you. And then. Thank you. <laughs> okay, it's the first time I'm doing this, so I apologize that I seem uh, like I, yeah. Um, and then the second person would be Mike McGee. Um, thank you for all your wisdom and your experience for, and, and fighting to have the Arts Village, Arts Village from the beginning, um, in order to even have this, yeah, today. Thank you for all your work. And finally, I'd like to thank Commissioner Rubio um, for your, your spirit. And I think you bring in this lively energy and a different perspective to the commission every time. Thank you. Thank you. I forgot y'all were leaving. I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's why I was saying welcome back, because I was like, oh, we're all back together again. Oh. I, I'm, 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 I'm so sad to see you guys go. Um, but um, with that, I think we are done with our meeting, so we will conclude. Um, the meeting is adjourned, and our next regular meeting is scheduled for Thursday, January 17th, uh, 2019. And we will be having the first listening session the very next day on January 18th. Yeah. So I hope to see, um, see you guys then. Happy holidays. Yay.